Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Tuet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Anna Bautic. And we're currently in London for DroidCon London. Both Anna and I had the pleasure of speaking at DroidCon London. Great pleasure. Very, very much so. But Anna, uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Well, I'm based in Croatia. I started with Android about five years ago, straight out of college. I didn't know much about Android at that point in time, so it was a steep climb as far as learning goes. But when I started working on Android, I basically fell in love with it, and here I am, five years later. Awesome, speaking at DroidCon London, so that's yes, really awesome. That's that's really cool. So your talk actually is on a subject that I feel like does not get nearly as much attention as certain other topics in our in our community, um, and that is security. Um, and it's a very important topic, at least I, I would I would hope so. Yes, it's uh, it's a vast topic, and uh, <laughs> the talks related to security were kind of sparse in the mm -hmm. last few years. Yes. But those talks that were given were pretty good. Mm -hmm. I hope mine was received the same way, and I feel that people in general tend to forget, you know, the small stuff that make can make a great difference in your application. And security issues are definitely the thing that fall into that category. Yeah, I actually had the pleasure of watching your talk when you gave a similar talk uh, at 360 and Dev. And I think that what I really liked was that um, it was very accessible. It wasn't like some deep, dark knowledge, you know, and I almost felt bad, like, you know, oh, maybe there's certain things that I haven't thought about with security. Um, and I thought that you did a great job of kind of just reminding us of some of those things. So could you maybe give us like an overview of maybe uh, some things that maybe people need to think about in terms of security on Android? Sure, no problem. Uh, the concept of the talk was basically just like, like you said, I was trying to give a big overview, you know, of the small things that you can do with your application mm -hmm. that don't require a lot of knowledge, but people, as I said, tend to forget it. So what, what's the main, you know, part of the talk is basically when people create the application they tend to, you know, do stupid stuff with their key store, <laughs> not save it or save it in the wrong place. And they expose their data and their users to, mm -hmm. well, problems in the future. We've had some issues in the past. I think that, well, experiencing something is the best way to learn something. Mm -hmm. We have learned a lot. And sometimes, you know, sharing your knowledge with people basically helps them not make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. And apart from, you know, taking care of those elements like key store and obfuscation, mm -hmm. I also touch uh, the big part, big issue that's basically data privacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. As we know, when you root your device, data becomes not private anymore. Mm -hmm. Although uh, rooting your device not, doesn't necessarily is related only to privacy issues, you know, you remove your bloatware, you want to modify your device. That those are valid reasons, and a lot of developers do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, rooting your device exposes your data. So if you need to save some kind of data on your device, that needs to be encrypted. Mm -hmm. And uh, people also like to you know experiment with encryption although there are great libraries and mm -hmm. already done code that can be applied you know i'm a big fan of not reinventing the wheel mm -hmm. if you have something at your disposal you should use it mm -hmm. and the biggest part of the pre presentation basically regards about uh, network security mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so that's basically securing the channel between the application and the servers which means that you know uh, certificate pinning and making the channel as secure as possible mm -hmm. and now with android and we have some great tools you know the mm -hmm. security configuration file which basically alleviates all that work from the developers they don't have to you know mm -hmm. pin the circuit if it's manually in their clients they can just define a configuration file and oh, cool. it just works and mm -hmm. I think that security on Android is really moving in the right direction. We have great tools now, the permission system from Android N. Mm -hmm. So I think that this this will definitely make a big improvement mm -hmm. in the applications and the development process. Mm -hmm. So for you, like maybe can you can you think of because you mentioned like you know sometimes we learn from experience, um, <laughs> making mistakes and fixing them. Yeah. Can you maybe talk about just a couple of maybe mistakes that you know? you or maybe someone like you might have made that you've learned a lot from like maybe something basic too because i feel like um it, it security seems in, uh, intimidating a lot but i think like the 
managing your key store. That seems like a very something that everybody. It's, basic. it's very basic. As far as key stores go, well, most developers tend to place the credentials in their build gradle files, which is uh, often the easiest way to do it, mm -hmm. but not the smartest because if you place your key store, the credentials, and the code base in one mm -hmm. single repository, you have one single point of failure. Mm -hmm. If a person can get to that, he, he or she has everything they need to create a, a va valid instance of your application mm -hmm. with a bigger version code and mm -hmm. deploy it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, use phishing attacks, you can make your users download the application from an un unsecure source and it will be updated on the user's device. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, big issue. So our suggestion would be to keep the key stores safe in a repository or some kind of secure storage, but mm -hmm. not the same repository as the code base. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, single point of failure is a big, mm -hmm. big problem. And uh, of course, not storing your key store in a secure location or losing it will cause your application not to be updatable on Google Play, which is uh, a big, big issue for your clients and a big oversight from the developer part. So. Key stores are important, then saving them is even more important. So you actually mentioned the new permission systems that we have. Do you have any kind of like learned good practices or, or I guess tips for maybe implementing those? Well, for permission system, like I, like we already agreed, it's it was a big change, but mm -hmm. it was a good change. I feel that the granularity could have been, you know, smaller. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, really? Could have maybe, maybe kind of made it even finer. But uh, the best practice I would suggest for the developers to employ is basically to know when to ask for a permission. Mm -hmm. So if it's a critical permission, if, it mm -hmm. require, if it's required for the application to work the whole time, you can ask it in advance in some kind of onboarding. So you don't need to, you know, pop that dialogue into the client's face at the first second. Mm -hmm. You know, ease them in, explain why you need the permissions because although we have them, mm -hmm. they're still sometimes vague and it's difficult to convey the information to the user. Mm -hmm. So basically know when to ask them for the permission. And mm -hmm. if the permission isn't necessary, you know, like call, call permission or something like that, don't block some kind of functionality because of it. You know, mm -hmm. mitigate it, work your way around it, or just hide the, hide it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So just common sense, I would say. No, no, it makes sense. Probably because it is common <laughs> sense. So okay, so um, let's let's round out with one more. So you talked about network security, and yeah. obviously when we're writing apps, network requests. Hope, well, I guess depending on what kind of app you have, uh, you might make network requests quite quite frequently. Yeah. Um, can you maybe just explain just like simple things to think about when you're starting to make network requests uh, in, involved with security? Well, as far as security goes, I would say that certificate pinning is important mm -hmm. because uh, most of the you know enterprise clients they do have valid certificates from well-known well certificate authorities, and they have extended validation certificates which are basically the same as regular ones, but it's kind of a more extensive process of proving your identity. Okay. And for me, when I see the name of the, you know, from the Facebook or something mm -hmm. in the address bar, it's right. just one more flag that they're actually mm -hmm. considering yeah. the security. And as far as requests go, like I said, certificate pinning will mitigate the man in the middle problem mm -hmm. and make sure that your application is communicating with the one you're trying to communicate. So. That that's basically all there is, and it's it's like the biggest solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Although it introduces another problem, and that's the point where the certificate, you know, <laughs> expires. So right. that that's one thing to keep in mind, and it basically stresses how important it is to talk to your clients mm -hmm. and uh, explain to them how changes on the certificates on the servers will affect the users. Mm -hmm. In this instance, you know denial of service which mm -hmm. is bad so things like that need to be planned and coordinated so mm -hmm. you need to be the one who's you know helping your clients understand the risks Do, would you i mean this, this is a little bit of a simplistic question but would you consider you know basic security hard on android or do you think it's more just a matter of people knowing what what they need to do no it's it's not hard well if you take a look at all the points i've covered in my talk, it's mm -hmm. basically very simple things, small okay. steps, right. but you know, you add one, another, the third one, it amounts to something big. So mm -hmm. you're basically creating a deterrent for your attackers, for people who try to, you know, change your code or 
create a malicious version of your app. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a small effort and I truly feel that everyone can apply it. So whether you're good with security or not, mm -hmm. I think that it's basically very easy to employ and I'd be people should do it. Absolutely. And I believe the talks at DroidCon were recorded, um, and I will definitely be rewatching Anna's because um, I feel like I know, I know that I personally still have a lot to learn um, about security at Android, so I'm very happy that um, you are one of the people out here telling us what to do about it. But thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, so if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Well, they can find me at Twitter. They can find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. All my actual handles are the same, so they're ABA. O T I C, ah. and there will be accessible somewhere. Awesome. So, so we, well, definitely, if you want to learn a little bit more about security, um, please check out Anna and her talks. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.